Hi there, I'm Bill DeWeese, voiceover talent and voiceover career coach. Someone asked me earlier this week how often they should make a new voiceover demo. Very good question. Thought maybe we could talk about it today a little bit to help give you some guidance as to when or when not to record a new demo. Uh, of course, a demo, the purpose of your voiceover demo, it is your lead marketing tool. It is what you're using to create opportunities. So when somebody hears your demo, it should reflect who you are, what you're capable of doing, and uh, help give you the opportunity to close the deal through an audition. Although sometimes people will hear your demo and they'll contact you outright and say, love your work. Can you quote me for this job? Which is always an awesome thing when it does happen. So a couple of things. Keep this in mind. Uh, first of all, let me say this. There is no formula. There is no time. It's not like two years or three years or whatever the case may be. Um, there are a few things that you should consider when deciding whether it's time or not. And it can be different for different people. So first of all, remember that a demo reflects your current skill set, which should be continually progressing. So um, earlier on in your career, you might, you know, you might want to consider having a new demo mate after a year, and certainly probably no longer than two years, because you will grow at a more rapid pace earlier on in your career. And then, of course, it becomes more gradual, the more experienced you become, as in any skill. Um, so that's the first thing first thing to keep in mind. Remember, it's a current reflection of your skill set. It is not static. It's it's just, it, I mean, well, it actually, it is static, but you're dynamic. And what I mean by that is that the demo doesn't change. It's a snapshot of you and time. This is what I can do now. Of course, in real life, we're dynamic. We change, we learn, we grow. And so we want the demo to be reflecting uh, what we are capable of at any given time. So again, as time goes by, uh, our skill set won't be progressing as quickly because we always learn, you know, we learn and grow usually rapidly early on when we're learning a skill. And then things kind of slow down and become more of a gradual curve um, throughout the course of our career. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing is this, is that the demo should sound current and not dated. And that could be a function of several things. It could be the copy. For instance, you know, if you're advertising the 2011 Ford Mustang, that's a big red flag. That just, it just sounds dated. Uh, well, it doesn't sound dated. It is dated. So when you're giving reference to products that no longer exist or things that, you know, people are scratching their head and say, what's this all about? That's obviously outdated. Um, then you need to change. And maybe you don't need to change of the entire demo. Maybe you just need to change that particular segment of the demo. But that is, that is something to consider. If it sounds dated, either in the copy, the music, because obviously, you know, things sounded different in the 80s, 90s, and even early 2000s than they do today, the music that's being used in commercial production. So the music should sound current. The production should sound current. When a demo is finished, it should sound like it was ripped off of TV right in the middle of a network television program. You know, a national TV ad. It should have that aesthetic. It should sound, in terms of copy, delivery, uh, music, uh, everything should sound, should sound current. The other thing I want to mention is this, is to focus on your hits. And I guess, you know, I, I worked for many, 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 many years as a radio programmer. And so uh, this was a concept that I, that I lived by. And what I found out is that in marketing and in voiceover in particular, it really does apply. People aren't really, they say they're interested in variety, but what people really want to hear is what they want to hear. And in broadcasting, they it doesn't matter whether you're a news talk station or whether you're a contemporary hit station or an oldies. It doesn't matter. People want to hear. They may say one thing, but what they want, they want to hear what they like, what they want to hear. Now, with your voiceover demo, an interesting thing happens as you begin to market yourself. You will find that when people, uh, prospective clients reach out to you, they will point to your demo and reference something you did hey, I really like the way you did this, or I really liked that commercial. I really liked that read. And as time progresses, you should keep some sort of tally, be it mental or physical, of how many times somebody requests something from your demo. You need to figure out what your greatest hit or your greatest hits are. And there, it may be appropriate based on the response that you get from your demo that you know there's one selection, maybe two, where people, they love it. And they're always asking for that. And so the next time you decide to do a new demo, you may want to take 
that one or two, those two selections and incorporate those in your new, new demo. It's certainly what I do because if I have, you know, if I have a greatest hit, if I have something that people are constantly requesting and saying, man, we love the way you do this. Will you do that? I don't care when I recorded it. If they're loving it, I'm playing it because I'm always going to be playing the hits. As a matter of fact, I have one selection on my commercial demo now that's, gosh, it's probably at least 10 years old. Now, it doesn't sound dated, thankfully. Um, and it was certainly, a, you know, it's a snapshot of where I was at at that particular time. But that particular selection, uh, it resonates with people. And I get a lot of requests for that read. So why would I, you know, just because I'm tired of it, you know, it's like, have you ever been to a concert of, a, of an artist that you love and you're really hoping they play that song that was such a huge hit and you want to hear it and you want to hear it and then the artist doesn't play it or they dramatically change it because they're bored with it. I actually remember, you know, working in, in broadcasting, I, I emceed hundreds of concerts and I remember, and I won't say any names, but I remember an artist saying, well, you know, I'm tired of that song. Well, you know, nobody gives a rip whether you're tired or not. That's what they like. That's what they came to hear. So give the people what they like because it, what that results in is more work for you. So again, there's no fast and hard rule as to how often, but it should reflect your current skill set. again, which will evolve over time. It should not sound dated in terms of copy or um, music production. Uh, and also make sure that if you have something that's an established hit, uh, you should seriously consider incorporating that even into your current demo. Hope you found this helpful. I do wish you great success. If you want to find out more and learn more about establishing a successful voiceover career, I'm going to point you to some information below in the description of this YouTube video. And I hope you'll check that out. And I also hope you'll like and share and subscribe. And we'll talk to you soon.